Today we talked about the product rule and the quotient rule. Now the idea behind all of these rules is that if we know how to take the derivatives of some simple functions, then we can take the derivatives of complicated functions by breaking them down into the products, quotients, sums, etc. of these simpler functions. So let's consider these two functions. They're both lines. I know that the derivative of f of x is 3 and the derivative of g of x is minus 5. Doesn't matter where, doesn't matter which value of x. So consider the function that's the product of these two functions. If I want to differentiate this, I can use the product rule. The derivative of this function is equal to the first, which is this 3x plus 1, times the derivative of the second, which is minus 5, plus the second function, minus 5x plus 6, times the derivative of the first, which is 3. And if I wanted to simplify that I could, I can say that's minus 15x minus 5 minus 15x plus 18, which is minus 30x plus 13. Now if I'd made a little mistake, if I'd missed a negative here and maybe I'd added this 15x, it would have canceled out with this, I would have been left with 13, I would know that I'd made a mistake. Because if I get a constant derivative, that means my graph was a line. Lines are the only graphs where their derivatives don't depend on x. Now suppose I want to differentiate the quotient of these two functions. Now I should be a little bit careful. My denominator shouldn't be 0. So this derivative is only going to exist when x is not equal to 6 fifths. The rule for the quotient is I take the bottom times the derivative of the top minus, not plus this time, minus the top times the derivative of the bottom divided by the bottom squared. If I wanted to simplify this a little bit, I could. And there's my derivative. Again, this is only the derivative where the function exists, and the function certainly doesn't exist when x is equal to 6 over 5. But also, we can see that this derivative wouldn't exist there either. One interesting thing we can note is that this derivative is going to infinity as x gets closer and closer to 6 over 5. So at this discontinuity in this function, we know something weird happens at 6 over 5. Not only is the function growing, but the rate at which the function is changing is growing.